Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show with our host, Bill Sheldon. Join us each week as we explore the courses, the people, and the events that shape our great game. Welcome to this edition of the Michigan Golfer. We're at the pre-grand opening of the new tribute course in Baylor, Michigan, part of the Otsego uh, Club, and we're delighted to have with us the owner uh, here today, Keith Gornick, and the chief architect and designer, Rick Robbins. It's a Gary Coke, Rick Robbins design course. Rick, you and Gary Coke combined for what has got to be a masterpiece golf course, and we're going to look at it in just a moment. But your name may not be quite as familiar in Michigan. Tell us about your company and your relationship with Gary and also some of your other golf activities. Uh, Gary and I met in Tampa, Florida a number of years ago. Uh, I was working with the Nicholas Company, uh, developing and redesigning Avila Golf Club in Tampa. Gary was a member there, and he and I had the opportunity to – sit and talk to each other about design philosophy, about what we were doing with that golf club. He was very interested in the design aspect of it. I then went uh, over to Hong Kong for a couple of years with the Jack Nicholas Company doing golf course designs in the Far East and came back to Tampa at the end of 1991, and Gary and I sat down again and said, hey, you know, maybe we'd do some things together. In the interim, Gary had done a golf course in Central Florida. So we decided we would uh, join together and, and produce golf courses, and uh, we actually met this client, Mr. Keith Gornick, in 1994 uh, at a golf conference, and this was one of our first starts together, even though here it is 2001 and we're just opening it, going through the environmental regulation and things there has been uh, some time. Uh, I've been in the golf business for 28 years. I'm a landscape architect. I graduated from North Carolina State University School of Design. It's all I've really ever done. I grew up around the golf business, grew up in Pinehurst uh, at Pine Needles, where they just played the Women's Open this year, uh, learned to play golf there. I have a company called Robbins & Associates International that also does golf course design work overseas. We've done a lot of work in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, China, Turkey, all around the uh, world, in addition to what Robbins Coke Golf Designs does that uh, Gary and I uh, work together with. Well, even though it's raining right now on this uh, pre-grand opening of this majestic golf course, we're going to go out and look at some holes, and then later we'll get back inside and talk a little bit, Rick. Great. Good deal. Legends beckon me to follow in their steps through historic stands of towering pines among shimmering banks of heather. Visit www.michigan.org. For information about Michigan golf packages and courses, legends beckon me to play forever, and I follow them to Michigan. You were telling me as we were coming down this way that uh, this starts the stretch of your favorite golf holes on this uh, course for a variety of reasons that only a golf architect would appreciate, but tell us. Well, we just came off of holes three and four, which are both in some pretty hilly terrain. They're up and down quite a bit. This area here of holes five, six, seven, and eight is on an island of upland, completely surrounded by Corps of Engineers jurisdictional wetland areas all around it. About 40% of this site had wetlands that were under the jurisdiction of the Corps of the Department of Natural Resources in Michigan. So we had a relatively flat, rolling piece of ground with a lot of beautiful trees, nice streams along the sides, that sort of thing. So just a great piece of golf, and we didn't have to move as much dirt to fit it in here. The seventh hole at the Tribute, a, a par five, and uh, as you uh, have pointed out, Rick, it's really in a very natural setting, and it certainly it, it shows the vistas and the beauty of this area. It really does. This is a 607-yard par five, so it's it's got some substantial length to it, but when we came down here on this island, like number five, which we described a few minutes ago, you can kind of see as the camera's panning around the low area off to the right of this hole, how it goes back up the mountains on the other side, and the fact that this hole fits down this valley in front of us, all of that was natural. Even though it's a 607-yard par five, we didn't have to do very much earth moving at all out here. It just fit into this area very naturally. It's one of my favorite holes personally just because of the, the vistas down in this valley area and the way the hole fits in the strategy here. It's probably not a two-shot par five with the lake in front of the green up there, uh, but where you hit your second shot and how you open it up to sit uh, your shot into that green is going to be very important. 
Eighth hole at the tribute, uh, Rick. You've got kind of a ravine that uh, comes into play, I suppose, on your approach shot. Yes, it does. We're standing just beyond the uh, landing area, the design landing area, which is just behind us. In front of us, we had a natural area, a, a ravine here that's fairly deep. It's about uh, 20 feet deep from where we stand, a small river flowing through it. You hit over this to the green, but you're going to see that uh, we left a low area in front of the green, but we also left a big bailout area. This is a pretty good size par four. This is uh, mid 430 yards from the back tees. We tried to leave them a place so that they could really hit the ball as a bailout if they haven't hit it very far off the tee, and then have an opening directly into the green from that left-hand side. Described it with some bunkers, but that pretty much just fit into this piece of land that we had here, and uh, the ravines like this are things that we had to deal with all the way through this process. The ninth hole really shows some of the environmental challenge you had to face. Tell us about this golf hole. It does. This is a long par three. It's about 220 yards from the back tees, mainly because of what you see right in front of us here. We have a river flowing right down in front of us. You can see the bridge crossing it. You can see probably through the uh, camera on the other side of that bridge, there's a tee over there. There are tees immediately to our right, and then the fairway pad with the green in our distance. There's also another river just like this one right on the other side. So we had these kind of natural areas to deal with throughout this golf course. Uh, walking this site uh, in initial routing plans, we had areas staked for our greens and our tees and our fairways, and, and going through this area was really quite a challenge, as uh, you might be able to see through here, of what it looked like. But we're very proud of the fact that this construction has just occurred, and we have left all of this undisturbed and it's in its natural state. We did not create erosion and sediment problems. We don't create runoff into the streams. And so this is the kind of thing we really try to do and, and work on and preserve this area. And this was the thing that uh, Keith Gornick, the owner, said this is what he wanted to do. You know, a lot of times, Rick, we, we think, how do architects designing golf courses start with a piece of property uh, and end up with a golf course? Uh, and you talk a lot about the starting point being a topo and all, and then you say, well, even there are surprises for you when you start designing the course. Yeah, this is one of the great examples of that. And one of the reasons we stopped here is this beautiful river that you can see flowing down through here. When we had our topo maps, it did not show any kind of water feature here at all. There was no indication that there was any water. There was a valley shown here, but that was it. So as we were walking the golf hole, we originally had this 11th hole, which is a par 5 playing at this valley, all on that side. Because it got very, very steep up on that side, we decided to move some of the tees to less steep land over here. As we were walking down through here, we saw this beautiful river here that hadn't shown up. And up that direction, about 100 yards, it completely disappears and becomes a spring and runs all the way through this hole but underground and so it only shows up right here so it really was a a great surprise one of the kind of things an architect that you say wow there's always something you're going to find out about these uh, when you really get out on the ground and you can't do it all by maps one other thing that uh, i think is pretty unique about this golf course and we discussed it a little bit when we were out there riding around is how many very very different feels you get on the different holes out there Brian was saying we start off pretty easily on one. These holes are out in a relatively open area where you have long views and, and fields and, and open kind of areas. Then you go down into the forest here and you're down on the lowlands there. Those holes are very different than the ones up here in the mountain. You come up the mountain here. These are then out in the open land again in, in the uh, older fields. They're gently rolling areas that we just simply built the golf course right into the ground. Without question, the Otsego Club in Gaylord, Michigan, uh, always been a special place, but with the addition of the tribute, uh, making it an extra special place for your calendar next year. Uh, we want to thank uh, Keith and uh, Rick uh, for joining us and for sharing some about uh, the new golf course. And we want to encourage you to make your plans right now for early next year following the grand opening of uh, this beautiful new course, the tribute. Thanks, guys, for being with us today thank you, Bill. on the Michigan Golfer. And thank you for tuning in. This is Bill Shelton reminding you every week to watch the Michigan Golfer.